Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you for giving me an opportunity to comment on the presidential address and also to thank the president for taking time to tell Kenyans what he as the head of state and head of government has been doing. Mr. Speaker, sir, I had an opportunity to keenly listen to the president on various um, issues that the president spoke about. And uh, briefly, I just want to say that uh, really, although I'm not here to criticize, but I'm here to state certain things or to put the record straight. Mr. Speaker, sir, during his address, the president mentioned various projects that the Jubilee government has completed. And uh, at that point is when I asked myself, when those who are pre preparing, excuse me, Mr. Speaker, sir, I forgot my notes. Those who are preparing the speech for the president, do they really verify some of the things that they say have been done? I heard the president making reference to a road from Kakamega to Kisumu, and which, as a member of this house, I've had a, various opportunities to be able to travel through that road while attending uh, functions organized by this parliament. And Mr. Speaker, sir, I don't know whether there's any other road between Nairobi, between uh, Kisumu and Kakamega, but the one road which is there, which is around 47 kilometers, is not, concluded, is not uh, completed. The road is completed towards um, Kakamega, but on the side of Kisumu, that road is still not complete. I'm yet to really see a road that the president mentioned in his address. I was quite impressed that the president gave a lot of um, uh, recommendations to the unity of this nation. Spoke heavily about the BPI initiative, which I hope that the president will now take it further and ensure that it does not become an, an academic exercise where this group of eminent personalities and distinguished Kenyans who are appointed by the president and the prime minister to travel across the country and collect the views of Kenyans, those views of the Kenyans will be taken into consideration. And for once in this, the history of this nation, this country will be united. Mr. Speaker, sir, the president spoke about corruption. Corruption is something which is eating this economy. It's a huge cancer. But I was quite surprised that even on, during the presidential address, the figures which were being quoted are not the same figures which are being quoted by the newspapers. So sometimes there's a huge disconnect. I would want to believe what the president was saying, but I also question the source of information from these other entities, like the media, that talk about the work that we've been doing to try and recover you know, resources or public funds that have been illegally misappropriated by people who had been elected or appointed to ensure a fiduciary responsibility. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have to say I was quite disappointed because I expected uh, the president to talk about how he intend to ensure that he achieved the Big Four agenda. This is something that every Kenyan is looking up to. The president clearly spoke about 175 Kenyans who had registered to be able to be considered for affordable housing. But the president in his speech did not tell Kenyans how during his tenure in office, he'll ensure that at least even the 175,000 Kenyans will be able to qualify and actually benefit from the housing unit. Mr. Speaker, sir, the president recommended or rather appreciated the work that uh, this parliament does in considering legislations. But I was quite shocked that the president, who asserted into law certain legislations which were amended at the National Assembly, but they were not brought into this house to be considered, did not point that out. I'm particularly perturbed by this issue of NIMS. Mr. Speaker, sir, I've, 
I've stated clearly that if a legislation is not brought before this house, I will not support it. And I stand by my words. I've seen a lot of Kenyans going out there, queuing to be able to be registered in this magical number, which not even a single senator in this house know what the number is all about. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, although I support the president, I would also be the first one to point out where I think we're just hearing stories and stories and stories and no tangible facts. Yes, our economy is growing. There's no doubt. But the economy is growing only to those who want to continue really taking advantage of the poor. When you, list, when you look at all activities, one of the things which was very interesting to me here is that I noted that the president has indicated clearly that there'll be funds which will be available to be lent out to small SMEs. But this is where the money is. I, was, I wanted to hear the president telling me or telling Kenyans that, yes, we borrowed $350 billion to build the SGR. And this is how, or this is how much we have paid back so far. Or this is how we are, we are going to ensure that we continue paying so that we do not continue burdening Kenyans. The president spoke about the second uh, phase of the SGR, and I wanted to correct the president there and say that this SGR is not from Nairobi to Naivasha. It is Nairobi to Narok. Unless the president is going to get another big loan to divert the already concluded um, SGR from Narok Suswa or Dukamoja to Naivasha. So if the president had not been clearly informed that this SGR currently terminates in Dukamoja in Narok County, I want to be very gracious and say, Mr. President, the SGR is actually from Nairobi to Narok County. And I thank him for having considered sending the SGR to Naro County instead of Nakuru County, or rather Naivasha, which they keep on forgetting. Mr. Speaker, I was a bit concerned and taken aback by the, the, the speech of the, state, uh, of the president in regards to the sugar industry. I expected the president to focus heavily on how our farmers, who have been suffering a lot, will benefit from government incentives that will ensure that, one, we stop the illegal importation of the sugar into this country. Two, we'll ensure that we support farmers, and particularly the cane farmers in this country, so that they too can feel that the crop that they have chosen to invest in will continue supporting them, but not send most of them to the early grave because they can no longer be able to afford to pay for their basic human needs. Farmers in Western Kenya are crying. There are big cartels in this industry. I really wanted the president to have given us a roadmap or other deliverables on how he's going to ensure that those farmers, are actually, their needs are actually taken into consideration. There are so many farmers in this country who have not been paid. I really wanted to hear that. I'm so glad that the president did not talk about the, the land which has been purportedly given to Uganda for them to be able to build a dry pot in Naivasha. One thing that I wanted one thing that I wonder is, what are we going to do to the farmers of this nation? What are we going to do to small enterprises or to Kenyans who want to be able to set up those pots and ensure that they can be able to make money from the neighboring countries? I have nothing against our countries working together. But I want to see more business opportunities for Kenyans living here who are struggling, rather than setting up a dry pot somewhere in Kenya 
so that another neighboring country can continue benefiting. I really want to see Kenyans benefiting more. It will be important for us to know whether at the end, if indeed the president is going to give land to Uganda, what process, where is that land going to come from? If it's a private land, I have no problem with it, but it's community land, then of course the people of that community ought to be consulted and shown how they are going to continue benefit. Finally, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to really re-emphasize on this issue of building bridges. I'm happy that the president really spoke very passionately about it. But I'd like to see action. I'd like us to really either set aside this debate of having a referendum, or maybe we embrace it if we're ever going to be able to have a referendum in this country so that we can be able to unite the entire nation. This issue of not being included in government is really causing a lot of problems in this country. Neighboring countries, like Rwanda, for instance, which um, today I stand with them in remembering the 25th uh, uh, anniversary of uh, the terrible genocide. And I, and I hope that that will never happen anywhere else in this, in this world. The people of Rwanda, the constitution is very clear. There is no winner take it all. In fact, as we speak right now, President Kagame only has 50% of the people from his political party in government. The other 50% is from opposition. There are few things that we may end up doing so that we don't, that may not even require a referendum so that people in the country or the whole nation can feel included. So I would hope that the president would be able to follow through with his um, address and the promises that he made to ensure that by the time he leaves office, people will remember him not as the president who spoke so much, but the, as the president who ensured that whatever he spoke about, he walked that talk. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir.